Hey, what's up, everybody? It's me, Tim Keys, and I'm here to talk about the new collection from Arteria. They are on version 9, which was just released today. Yes, and it looks like they added some very interesting features. They've updated the piano to version 3. They have introduced the MS-20, as well as you know, release the full version of augmented strings and augmented voices. I will go over augmented voices. I did have some difficulty downloading augmented strings, the full version. It seemed like it would not download the demo of <clears throat> the Windows version. So I won't be covering that in this video, but I will go over some of these new VSTs some of the basic, you know, new stuff that they add and even do a comparison towards the end of the video. So let's get started with piano version three. Um, so if you're familiar with Arteria stuff, they pretty much specialize in physical modeling software as well as, you know, emulating old school instruments and whatnot. And the piano, in this case, is modeled. I don't think there are any samples in this device. Which is nice. Now, when you set this up initially and upload it for the first time, you will have to uh respond to some prompts where they ask you to strike the keys of your midi controller uh, at various rates uh, and different velocities and whatnot because it wants to get a sense of the velocity response on your controller to provide you know a more realistic and customized experience to kind of help you get that feel of playing a real piano if you will i'm using a control 49 old school Korg and so you know there's not going to be a whole lot that translates you know in compared to using like a, a 88 MIDI controller but you know it definitely helps anyhow you know they give you a nice updated GUI and there are a total of one two three four five six seven eight nine, 10, 11, 12 different modeled pianos to work with. <clears throat> and then you have your, your basic, your macros here where you can adjust the brightness, timbre, dynamics and so forth. You can play with the amount of reverb. You have different patches you can work with. And there are a lot there right out the gate. But then you can go into this advanced marker right here. And under model, you can do things like adjust the hardness of the hammers, the dynamics, the position, release time, etc. Tuning. Pardon me, I'm just trying to move my pedal closer to my foot. <laughs> it's just that tuning. So you can adjust the tuning to get more of that older sound if you want. For you guys who are into that lo-fi. You can also adjust the aging. Make the hammer louder or softer. You can adjust the sustain pedal if you're not using a controlled pedal. You can adjust the mic position. 
you have different options there. This kind of reminds me of Reason's old refill collections where they sampled, in their case, it was sample based, but you had, you know, different mic positions that was recorded and you can select different patches of those recordings and the piano would be heard from different vantage points and whatnot to create a different experience when you played it. That's kind of the same idea here, except for opinion it sounds pretty good i'm a sucker for pianos anyway so <clears throat> i've always been a big fan of the piano collection that came from arteria here you have the equalizer section you have your compressor your preamp that you can adjust and different options for your reverbs so you know you can get a lot of mileage you know depending on how you want to you know customize your piano sound and again with over over 10 different options to choose from the type of pianos you have you know it's a lot that you can do Then after that, everything else would be based on preference. Some of the pianos, I will say, <clears throat> sound a little bit different from the older version. So depending on what your preferences are, if you're coming from version two, you may or may not like some of the changes in version three sonically. Um, but yeah, that's all going to be contingent on the preference. Otherwise, if you're getting this on the upgrade, I think it's worth it for what you're getting at a, at a good price point. And again, if you've never used Arteria before and you're kind of curious about the products, I would say check it out. Check it out. You might like it. There's definitely something here for you. You may or may not need it, but there's something here for you in terms of you'll find some sounds that you like out of this and yeah it can sound really good so yeah enough of that we'll go to the next plug-in that i want to kind of talk about so now i got augmented voices loaded up and this is the full version so it's very similar in terms of its layout to augmented strings however this is the full version that introduction piece and so not only do you get you know a lot of different patches to work with off rip you also <clears throat> have the ability to kind of get into the architecture of the synthesizer and yeah there's a lot here they combine the combination of sampling and wavetable and harmonic which i assume would be you know, additive synthesis in some way, shape, or form. And, you know, they put it together in a very inviting user interface. And there's a lot here. I want to turn that off. Let's see what we got. You know, you get a lot of different... Kind of intense on the computer, but not too bad. So different sounds to choose from. Let's turn it off. So layer one, or layer A, part of me on one side, you have your samples. 
and then on the other side you have your scents. What I have not been able to figure out with the scents is you have, if I can pull it up, you had six different like slots. You saw the numbers one through six. And so I don't know if that means it allows you to put up to six different six different waveforms in each of these spots. I would presume so, but I'm not sure. And I really just started messing with this. So I haven't had time to dig deep into its sound. You also have your amplitude envelope. Down here you have your filter section and you have, you know, the Oberheim SEM filter, multi-mode, surgeon, comb, phaser, and format. So a lot of flexibility in, you know, shaping your tones, but not so much that it becomes overwhelming. Likewise, you have layer B, which will allow you to do similar things with your filter, your resonance, your, you know, your uh, sheets, your envelopes, as well as your amplitude envelope. There we go. So yeah, if you look here, you have the double click under this marker likewise right here. And there are a lot of different options for, you know, your samples and your voices. You have additional samples, process voices, real voices. So there's a lot here, but it's not so much that it's overwhelming. But <clears throat> it sounds really good. Again, here you have for the synthesized sounds, you have analog. There's a lot there. You have granular, harmonic, and then wavetable. Sounds really good. I'm using a lot of computer, but it sounds really good. Um, <clears throat> the harmonic component is nice. I'm a sucker for the vigils. It does remind me a lot of pigments in that sense when you get okay, to certain parts. So yeah, there's a lot there. You have a modulation section where you can route LFOs to different aspects of the synthesizer. You have this fun marker right here, which I don't know exactly what it does, but I imagine it is going to allow you to do some interesting stuff. And then you have the randomization button right here. You can set all that up. You have arpeggiator. You have a nice effects section which has a lot of different stuff under the hood and then you, know, you can set up your different macros and whatnot this is very nice i mean and what's cool about this is it's not necessarily trying to emulate any one particular instrument but it can get you into that soundscape territory you know messing around with voices it kind of covers a lot of ground, but it's not so overwhelming that, you know, you, you might find it daunting. You know, augmented voices is nice. And, you know, I imagine you have very much the same type of layout for augmented strings, which I can't wait to download it and, you know, mess around with the full version. I hope they get that situation squared away so that we can use it. All right, now for the final one, get right to that. And so now we have the Korg MS-20. I thought this was very interesting 
that Arteria decided to go with this particular synth to emulate. Um, primarily because, <clears throat> yeah, um, they went with Korg. And, you know, Korg, the company, they have their own version of the MS-20 that's out in VST format using its own version of modeling. I think there's a circuit modeling technology. And so, yeah, interesting in terms of, you know, coming out with another competing product. Arteria does some things a little bit differently. You get up to six voices of polyphony. to it and I know there's some delay in there but that has a lot of bite to it the the MS-20 was pretty cool in that you know it kind of stood on its own yes you had the Moogs and the Moogs had that that very thick warm texture um, <clears throat> this is very aggressive in its tone um, which is quite the contrast compared to like the the mini Moog sounds and whatnot. Yeah, this is um this is a welcome addition. You get your oscillators, you get two oscillators, you get to adjust your sounds and so forth. You can, you know, mess around, mess around with the scale to get that bite. If you, know. you have your high pitch. You have your modulation generator section, your envelope generator, amplifier, cutoff. Everything is laid out kind of, you know, nice and neat. It can be overwhelming at first, but you know, you take your time and adjust different knobs and whatnot. You can get used to programming this stuff if you haven't done so already. And you, you know, if you've never used MS-20 or any of the, the modeling VSTs out there. The, the cables are nice. You know, <laughs> everything's virtual here, which is cool because with the real MS-20, you know, you had to hope you didn't lose your cables. And this is... It gives you everything in a semi-modular, you know, layout. You get a couple of extra different patches here due to the fact that... Oof. Due to the fact that, you know, you have up to six voices of polyphony. Uh, it can be intense on the computer. Depending on the specs of your computer. And the sound can be abrasive depending on, you know, how it's programmed. Uh, descendants. It sounds good. Now, the difference in this particular version is you get a sequencer. So you can start programming stuff based on the sequencer. If you don't feel like doing all that, just go to the sequencer preset, <laughs> pick one. <laughs>
So you have that. This can be programmed and adjusted to your liking. You have the control voltage generator. So that's pretty neat. That was not on the initial Korg MS20, nor is it on Korg's VST. And then you get your hardware, not your hardware, pardon me, your effects. You know, your delays, your bit crushers, your choruses, your flangers, and so forth. You can add that Juno chorus to your stuff and make it sound you know, quite nice. So yeah, I think it's pretty neat in that respect. And <clears throat> it does add a little something extra that makes it stand out, you know, especially compared to, you know, Korg's own VST version. Matter of fact, let's pull that up real quick. Give me one moment. All right, so here we have Korg's version of the MS-20. And I will say it pays to update your VSTs because, you know, I was playing with the older version. I didn't update it. And now I'm like, man, why didn't I update it sooner? The GUI looks very nice. Um, everything is laid out in such a way that it's kind of easy to program all in one shot. Again, you have your oscillators here, your <laughs> your filters. You have a four on the floor. I'm going to change that. Now, if you're using the Korg version, there are a lot of presets to work with. You have the Divine Bank, USA, MS-20 Factory 1, Factory 2, start off template, and it's just a lot of different categories to work with. Let's see, they have a sequencer section. Oh, that's SC. They do have a sequencer section. For sound effects. Oh, wow. They got the drums. They got some perks. And some basses. I've made some basses with this synthesizer. And yeah, it can... Um, it can bump. too much fun that's nice slick kick That's cool. So the lighter I test the keys. Yeah, of course, that's why it's called Velocity Perks. Man. So, yeah, you definitely have more to work with in this one right out the gate. Which is cool. Let's go to the sequencer, see what they got. So yeah, you are going to get, with the Korg version, you're going to get a lot of presets to work with right out of the gate. Um, <clears throat> I don't think the Arteria Collection, their, their version, I don't think it has quite as many presets. But, you know, that's not a bad thing either. Yeah. 
Yep. Yeah. That's where it's coming from. The modulation generator. Set the timing. Sync. So that's where that's coming from. Which means you can emulate these patches in the other ones because it's basically for the most part the same architecture you know the only difference would be in your effects you know the type of effects that Korg uses as opposed to the effects that Arteria uses there's no Juno uh, chorus there but you get an ensemble which is uh, <clears throat> the emulation of the poly six which is very nice in my opinion you have an overdrive I think you have yep you do have a distortion so yeah the effects are different but you know you can get the same basic ideas out with this now what i don't know is let's see a saving program i know with some of korg's other products like the m1 the M1 VSTs, the WaveStation VSTs, you could take patches that were programmed on the actual hardware and you can you can have those files saved and then they could be uploaded into the software version of the M1. And I have some for the M1 as well as for the, the WaveStation that was done third party. I don't think this quite does the same thing just due to the fact that this was initially, <laughs> this was like hardware, analog synthesis in nature, not based on any digital programming. So there's that. But um, <clears throat> in terms of which one is better, that's going to depend on the price point of what you want to pay. And, you know, if you need a sequencer and if you want to be able to take that screen and Let's see. I don't know if they have anything here that will allow you to stretch it out and make the screen bigger. So let's see. Nope. At least as far as I can see. So nothing to make the screen bigger. Looks like you can import a bank, import a program, which is very interesting. Oh, screen size. Here we go. So yep, you can make it bigger. It's not quite the same, but yeah, you can adjust the screen size. So that's cool. Yeah, it'll all boil down to preference. So depending on what your needs are, what you're looking for, and what version of the Arteria collection you have, you might, you might find it that you want to stay put where you're at. You might not need or necessarily want the new upgrades. You know, right out the gate, you might want to wait before you upgrade. On the other hand, you might find that the Arteria version and the package that you can get with this new update has enough stuff that you might want to do the whole, the full-fledged upgrade, or you just might want to turn around and pull some of the new VSTs that you want and go from there. So yeah, both both Korg versions are very powerful and very fun to play with. It's just kind of it's gonna boil down to preference, but yeah, it's a lot of stuff in both of these. Either way, other than that, yeah, man, thank you for watching this video. I'm Tim Keys. I'm out. Peace.